Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now... Enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! Hi, welcome to TFLP, uh, episode 446. We are doing a pre-record tonight uh, for Labor Day, because we're going to be off for Labor Day, so we're uh, recording beforehand. Um, so I am joined tonight by Paul. Boo, Labor Day. <laughs> Power to the people. And Peter. Forever Destron. And Sean. Um, forever Autobot. No, no, that's just this one time. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, and I'm Lucas. So Sean, it's uh, it's been a minute uh, since you've been on here. So uh, welcome back. <clears throat> Thanks for having me. Uh, I just met these other two fine gentlemen tonight. So uh, yeah, it'll be good. So <laughs> there you go. It's like I swear you've done other shows with. Uh, Peter we have. Paul, really <laughs> Not a few times. It's, so. it's 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 been a while. It's so. been. A long long ago I since then your, your <laughs> hair has grown I, I yeah see exactly uh... i think i've added some inches to my hair sir here since uh yeah. we last spoke so but uh anyway so the topic tonight uh we're going to talk about some of the customizing projects that you guys have been doing or you know putting off i guess uh, <laughs> too i'm sure that there's plenty of those uh, and then, uh, and then also just kind of with, with the amount of product and all the figures that we're getting from Hasbro these days, uh, you know, is there the need to, uh, customize as, as much as we, you know, have in the past? Um, because a lot of those boxes have, have kind of been ticked. So we'll kind of go through that, um, you know, later in the show as well. So, um, so yeah, and and, so, and then also too. Oh, sorry. Go on. What were you gonna say? Is that your is that your question about customizing? The answer is no. Answer is no. Okay. Well, there right. we go. So, See you guys. All right. Have a good That's night. All right. Cool. <laughs> um. So you know, one of the things too is is that I know the old um, you know, combiner wars and things like that. It's like you almost had to customize your figures because. You know, at least with stickers, if nothing else, because there was almost no paint on a lot of them and whatnot. I think I remember Wheeljack was just so horrible. Uh, it was it was one that really stuck out for me. But it's like, all right, I have to get toy hack stickers here. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Like, um, like I haven't bought any of the repro labels for a long time, and I love repro labels. Have not bought them for a long time just because we haven't really. I I haven't personally needed have like a need for them. But that wheel jack that you're talking about, I bought from you. That looked really good with rubber labels on it. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No. Back back in the day. Yeah. No. I ended up doing the rubber labels, and then I got the uh, Dakara one, which actually had a, a nice deco on it. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I know uh, Christian and I kind of talked about this as well. That uh, they also make uh, rubber labels or toy hacks. Um, like we'll make new characters, um, you know, using stickers and whatnot. And so that that's kind of like the only ones that we've really been buying is, is, is those types of, of stickers. So I know, Peter, didn't you get a couple of Infernos that, uh, that you customize with that? Oh, yeah. I did. Uh, I, I made a couple of, I made, ca I made different. I made Cab and then I made Hosehead using sticker kits and and different kits from uh from render form um and then i recently bought the 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 toy hack sets for smokescreen from earthrise and wheeljack from where whichever one the cg kingdomy whatever just because i like seeing all the um 
all the racing decals, you know, and like sponsor mm-hmm. stickers. It's just that when I when I think smokescreen, I need all sorts of just sponsorship junk all over them. So that then let's get the number right, and 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 so yeah. those sets are brilliant. Love them. Yeah. Well, that, um. On the topic of cab and hose head, um. Yeah, I actually had to make my own from the universe. Like I made that probably eight years ago, but I mean nowadays it's like we're getting things that are so close you can just buy you know repa labels sticker kit plus a couple other little pieces that are 3d printed and you're good to go proceed yeah, not, not quite not quite the process is what it used to be so yeah and i kind of feel i mean i it's good and I'm grateful that we're getting all the great figures and all the great characters and, and they're ticking all those boxes. If you want yellow cliff jumper, there's a, a bumblebee that if you swap the head, it's close enough in that world's collide set. If you know, eventually we'll get a glyph and we'll get a tap out and we'll get a, whoever all, all the flavors of whatever mold Hasbro's going to find a way to, to get that money out of you because they like printing money and we're happy to be the printer. Um, but at the same time, part of me is agonizing because I have totes and totes and totes of, 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 of donor bots, spare parts, limbs, joints, hands, heads, you know, whatever that were tasked for old projects or just were spares from other projects that, that are now probably never going to get finished or, or be used in any way because Hasbro is doing such a good job these last three, four years. It's been amazing. I'm super happy, but at the same time, I'm like ah, angsty about. I bought all these junk bots for nothing. Yeah, that's that's rough. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Peter. I mean, you can still do the customs, I, I suppose. Yeah, but they. I mean, I don't. I don't want to spend $120 sourcing parts and and wasting not wasting time, but you know, doing time for a figure that Hasbro is going to come out with, and it's like, oh, it's twenty two dollars. There you go, and it looks better. Yeah, like, oh. yeah. like making a uh, like a few years ago, somebody made a Fangry from like I think it was a uh, Skull Cruncher and somebody else, and now they made an official Fangry. Right. And here come here comes the rest of them. Hopefully, so. Yeah, I I, I sourced parts to do a horrible. I used it was going to be skull mm-hmm. cruncher with other parts, and I I, so I, I bought spare uh, twin infernos or whatever his name is in from Titans Return, um, to to make a fangry. And then you like you sit on these parts and you sit on these parts, and it's like as soon as I get started, as soon as I get cutting, as soon as I get painting, there's the announcement. So part of me, and this has been this is like a joke around my house, you know, as soon as I actually like get digging in on a, on a project, here comes the announcement. So the, they they watch me. She watches me and the kids watch me and they're like, who are you doing? And then the boy, especially, he sasses me. He's like, you know, they're going to announce it as soon as you start and you, you get like really involved. You're going to get about 60, 70 percent. And then the, the announcement's going to come. It's going to be like, I'm done. OK, which is good because then the toy comes and I'm happy. And then I've got this unfinished project. Yeah. Well, one question I have as well is like a lot of the older figures had uh, ball joints. And so it was pretty easy to take those figures apart. Whereas now the figures have like universal joints with pins. And so I don't know, like, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge customizer <laughs> myself, but would you guys consider it? more of a challenge to do that or is that just nothing Sean that you just you know what whenever I whenever I get a pin I like to look at it I just look at it and then I put a little a little soldering iron with a small tip on it and I just heat it up a little bit and I push it out kind of like tracks here you know the tracks with the wobbly wobbly legs uh-huh um, on the big side of this little pin here the problem is they didn't push the pin far enough it's this little silver pin they didn't push the pin far enough so rather than taking vice grips and squeezing it and breaking the figure the I, worst uh, advice ever do not do that for I those of you who've video. seen that I, I, I saw him break it i said what are you doing man so but he was happy and 
different strokes for different folks. But yeah, I mean, you can get like a five dollar soldering iron from like Harbor Freight and with like a little tiny tip on it that's small enough to like touch the top of these, and you just sit there with it, and then you'll notice like as you hold the tip on the on the big side of this pin, the opposite side of this pin, it starts getting kind of wiggly, and then you can push it further. And as soon as you push it further, you just let it let it cool down, and then you have a fixed tracks. So, I mean, fixed mostly. There's still a little bit of a gap. See, big on that side, but it's pushed as far as it can go. It's flush. So, it is what it is. But I did buy the little uh, 3D printed uh, upgrade kit from uh, JRC Design. He made like a little. Uh, snap in 3d printed thing for the legs where in robot mode you can you know actually have his legs hold together so that helps so even with the uh like pushing the pin in further do your legs not uh fit together on their own without the kit um these do like i mean they fit together i mean that's as good as you're getting but the other side, you know, the other side's totally flush. So I don't know if it's just a problem in the plastic or what. But uh, in robot mode, he, he stands. He stands good. If you guys yeah, want to talk amongst mine yourselves, I'll transform like them. it was okay. Like, I haven't really had a huge issue, but I know... I bought three of them, and all three of them were the same. They were just all bad. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. So... I mean, I know that's how you deal with pins, but doesn't that melt? Like, you can't just do that over and over and over. You're going to melt the plastic into oblivion no, at some point. No, right? you, no. I mean, you don't do it over and over. You do it once. but uh, You don't hold it there long enough to where it starts to, like, the plastic. Yeah. Just hold yeah, it there to where the pin heats up enough. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, if, if I held it there too long, I'd have, like, it would be, like, no plastic touching the pin anymore because it would have melted away. Um, yeah, it, it takes finesse. Um, there's okay. probably a couple tutorial videos on YouTube where people have done that. Well, that's uh, like well, that's why I never do it because I'm always worried I'm gonna m melt yeah. it beyond you know beyond recognition, and then when I put it back together, it won't work. Um, um, it, I did that. that. I melted a few things when I first started. I mean, years yeah. ago, and, and but and you just learn with it, and that's why you practice like gen like genuinely find a scrap bot that has a pin and just practice. Yes, yes. See, so you get junk bot that you're never going to use, and you practice on the pins on that. And once you get good, then you can take wheels off. That's the only way to get these wheels off. You're going to do a full custom. You heat up that pin, and then as it gets hot, you're able to pull it out. And you'll hear so, people say, like, grab, get a, a rare earth magnet or a stack of rare earth magnets. So if you don't want to handle the handle the pin head yourself, or you know, and you don't want to get in there with needle nose pliers and pull the pin once it's hot or whatever. I mean, there are different ways to grab it, like like Sean was saying, different structure, different folks, and work to your comfort level and practice. Yep. Junker bots are the key. See, as, as Peter says, Paul, you just need a um, a, a box full of, of donor bots and uh, junker bots or whatever, so that way you can uh, practice on for this stuff, right? There are no junk bots. See, Every this bot is, is a treasure. The the uh, Cyberverse uh, Deluxes, apparently on like Walmart.com right now, I think uh, Anna was and Christian are all excited because they were like $4 for the Rodimus, I think, right now. And the uh, Shockwave, I think, was like 7 bucks or something. So they could get some of those and you can just practice customizing some of those. Those are fun figures. I think they're mostly ball joints. Those are They've got not, a couple but... pins, but yeah. 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 So, how do you, how do, you do this? <laughs> it's been, so out of it's the been a minute. Current assortments that we have, out of Kingdom, which figures, aside from like repairing things like, like with tracks or Galvatron's shoulders, which figures do we have the most potential for customs uh, at all? Like, where do you see the, the most, yeah, the most uh, potential to improve the figures in Kingdom? Well, I don't know if it counts, but the Bone Bots make some pretty cool stuff if you combine, like, dozens of them. And you don't even ha you don't really have to cut. I mean, they're kind of, you, you can customize them without having to paint or strip them or mess with any of the parts. You can just, right. they all come apart and you can do some cool stuff with them. They are fully modular. 
and 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 backwards compatible with the the modulators and the uh, boopifiers from a couple of years ago. <laughs> so if you like ever want to get into customizing but don't know where to start, start with those. Like you don't have to do anything except have fun. And then when you're ready to like start stripping paint and adding your own and melting stuff, then you then you know then you can try. But I don't have a good answer for your question other than that. I mean, one of the things I would say uh, with the Siege figures, a lot of people don't like the, you know, space mud or whatnot that's on them. And, like, you know, I know for myself that the Galvatron that recently came out, like, I'm not a huge fan of um, of that look with the, the weathering, quote-unquote, that they put on them. So for me, like, what would be the best way for me to remove that uh, isopropyl alcohol? Would you say? So um, what percentage 20... would we say is the best usually? Yes, 91%? exactly. That. Exactly. Yes. And it's like a plug for a big bottle, and it doesn't take a whole lot. Just apply some to a Q-tip and start rubbing. Okay. The, the only advice. Remember? The only advice with that, do not touch it to clear plastic. I no. Guess that it'll make it brittle, like like so brittle. It'll just it'll and, crack on its own. And milky. It'll it'll yeah. make it look like opaque and blech. And I mean there's there's merits to if it's a if it's a non uh, translucent part or transparent part uh, that you want to you know soak, you can soak them overnight. And then the, the paint just scrubs right off of just a standard piece of plastic. Or if it's like a like you know spot touching, like if you're playing with the uh, the weathering or getting the space mud off, Q tip, get scrubbing. It'll start coming off after about ten seconds, and then you're done. Rinse everything off. Good to go. So if I wanted to remove paint from the clear plastic, is there a way to do that? Sanding. Very light sanding, like a sanding stick that you get from the hobby store. Yeah. Well, you really don't want to remove it. You just want to scuff it and repaint it. If you want to paint it, I would not like it. If you want to make this whole thing clear, oh, no, color it really blue and call, it. call it a blue window. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. I'm sure there's ways. There's, there's, uh, like, uh, yeah, there's, there's people that are way more knowledgeable than I am. So. Um, trying to, trying to think of uh, you know some of the other figures that you would want to change. I, I feel like that's the biggest biggest thing. I don't know, just adding deco to figures too. I know Peter, you had mentioned about Cyclonus, I think before that you'd prefer you know slightly different color deco on him. Yeah, I mean, there, there's always arguments to be, arguments to be made for for toy accuracy. Gen 1 toy accuracy versus cartoon accuracy, whatever cartoon accuracy means anymore, because there's so many different animation companies, so many different animation errors that could be counted as accurate and blah, 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 uh, vagaries in, 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 in Deco. But, um, yeah, Galvatron could use a totally different Deco, in my opinion. His chin beard, his little chin trapezoid is not painted. He's the wrong shade of purple. He's got the space mud. He's just... I'm. I'm sure they're going to come out with a with a an 86 version or something. It's going to be a little bit more to my liking. Um, and he has predominantly misassembled shoulders, which is frustrating and yeah. beyond a lot of people's skill to fix out of the box. Um, but yeah, Cyclonus is kind of off to me. Galvatron's off. Eh, they might get fixed. They might not. The only thing about that, you know, and I know we keep talking about that we're going to get this like clean version of these figures and whatnot i'm not so sure because like for example galvatron right we're getting a toy deco of him and then there's another rumored like you know there was a, a with picture the from uh with the grid and all that that it seems like it lines up with some rumors and whatnot so like say theoretically if we got both of those well like it'd be pretty tough i mean not to say like you know we've gotten like eight siege megatrons or whatever it is so you know, it's it's theoretically possible, but it it just seems like that that's not the route that they're going to go. Like, because I know Takara kind of went the other way with their like perfect. What, what is it called again? I mean, finish PF. 
PF, yes. PF edition. That they kind of did, you know, more weathering and whatnot on on some of the figures, um, which is like, I don't know. I I don't the, necessarily agree with that. I don't think it looks that great. It's the opposite direction that I'd hope a premium finish would go, but yeah. that I mean, to each their own. I, I, my my little kid heart refuses to believe that they won't make the deco that my little kid heart wants, which is just straight up movie colored Galvatron with his face painted properly and the right shade of purple. And then my big kid brain says that there's no way that they're not going to release as many versions of that mold in as many decos as they possibly can to print that money from your pocket and your pocket and my pocket and your pocket, you know, because that's what they love to do. And they'll make us wait for it because we know that they like to tease us that incremental improvement that they right. love to do. This one's, this much much better and this much better every year and we're like oh damn it damn, oh, damn it how many megatrons do i need how many siege megatrons do i need now i have seven neat <laughs> but see that's where i feel like that no matter what they always will like do one slight tiny thing to like make it so that it's like not quite perfect like and again, yeah. like that that Earthrise Optimus Prime is is man he is is cl- is close to perfect you know whatever right um, if only he had you know some like white legs and the lower legs were like all blue uh, hmm. it would yeah. be perfect I mean, right mine was <laughs> <laughs> that's how mine came with like painted eyes and it's not focusing yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, and no, that, that's the first thing I did. Like this is like way back. Like everybody's had this figure forever. I don't know why they, they couldn't make the back of the legs blue, the thighs white. You know, like he said, and the yellow, where the yellow goes. I don't know. Yeah. But I had that's to do really... it on my own, so I wasn't gonna wait. That's Same really thing with sense. like Cliff Jumper. Like I did the you know the the gray thighs and the you know more tune accurate stuff took off the black off of the bumpers and yeah so. I, I mean i am curious with that if like if hasbro like if they had done a commander class quote-unquote optimus prime that was kind of like the hot rod or the rodimus that we're getting um except for like the trailer was better it came with some more accessories and whatnot but it was like literally that earthrise figure but then they just did it in the deco that we would want like would they actually do that or again is it something because like i still feel like that rodimus like they're still like it's it's really good um but there's still a couple of tweaks i would probably make to that to that figure to make it perfect so like what well Which the front thing? of the cab um like I, I wish there was kind of de- like it's kind of a plain deco. They have that so that yeah. the door can come down, um, is like a play feature. But um, and then I don't know. Like I, overall with the mold, like I mean, I wish it kind of went in a little bit further than what it does. Like it, it looks a little bit wonky, I guess. Um, with the car, I guess to me. Yeah. And do your doors stay closed on top, or are they gonna? No, I, I okay. need to. I've heard that if you put some like future on the door, or if you put like a little bit of super glue and let it dry, I guess like that it'll, um, you know, that the door will close. It'll give enough friction or whatever to, to do it. But I haven't done that myself. So speak. Yeah. Speaking of future, it's this, yeah. this guy's a floppy mess, but like his, his legs takes that much force to you know undo him now of course it's a tiny tab but he uh yeah he snaps in yeah see my legs don't come my legs don't come apart but they are uh loose like i need to put i just haven't put any future on him yet yep i think i need to revisit this leg it's still a little loose and again when we say future we're talking about it's like what is it future pledge floor polish right do you have a bottle it is this but they like change they they change the bottle deco every once in a while too so it may not look exactly like that and whatnot but it's like pledge like floor care 
is yeah, what it's, it is. It's uh make sure you get tile and vinyl floor, not the wood. Um yeah, this is the old bottle that said future. I don't think it says future anymore, but it's no, definitely it pledge. Make sure you get tile and vinyl, not not the wood. Yeah. So. And it smells great too. And uh the other thing with that, so it does make the figure a little bit shiny. So if you're trying to like make something matte, like it's not going to like if for whatever reason you apply it to the outside of the figure. But uh, I actually use that on uh, some figures like on Chrome to kind of help protect the, uh, the Chrome. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, I've never tried it, but definitely heard it. I did it with like the hot rod, the masterpiece hot rod, and um, Ironhide and Ratchet, just because people yep. were ta- were were like were saying it was flaking off for of them back in the day. So I just did it just to make sure it didn't have any issues. I'm putting a little in the joint while we're talking about it, and since it's right here, so yep, I just dropped it right in the uh, right in the mushroom peg. Work it around. Like two drops will do you. But yeah, tomorrow it should be like nice and tight. So definitely features something everybody needs if you're a, a you know Hasbro collector. So. I've never messed with that stuff. Never, never. Uh, Fingery really needs it. Fingery super loose. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty easy to work with. I mean, even you know people like me that are pretty much novices to that kind of stuff. Like, I yeah. haven't had any issues with it. One thing that I've never really used, but I know people have talked about it with, like, tight joints, is using, like, the shock oil. Like, do you use... Yep. <laughs> Teflon, silicone, lubricant. Make sure it's silicone. Um, but, yeah, it's basically... Uh, it lubricates joints. Um, it's, it says safe on rubber. It's, uh, you know, it's safe on... Uh, it's safe on um, all kinds of plastics, so yeah, as long as it's silicone, it'll it won't destroy your plastics. Um, another thing people use is um, nail polish, but I found nail polish flakes off really quick, so I've never actually used it except for once. And people have also used super glue. So when we're talking they... about n- nail polish and super glue is uh those would be for like tightening a joint so it'd be kind of similar to the yeah. pledge floor yeah. polish um, don't use super glue though let, let me finish this don't use super glue um because like the trick to super glue is if you use it don't stop working the joint you got to keep working it until it's all the way set up because if you stop then it'll freeze yeah but this actually came with my third party toy it's gear lube oh interesting um yeah i mean it's basically i think this says silicone lubricant but yeah it's gear lube i feel like fans toys needs to throw that in with some of their figures right? <laughs> well that, that that's a feature it's, it's the fan toy squeak <laughs> that's how you know it's an authentic fans toys product right yeah But yeah, I've okay. never actually so that, ended yeah, up that using the crash that, uh, that that gear lube or silicone lube before. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah, just if something's like totally like like as you move it, it chatters on the way down. Yeah, you know, you definitely want to use it, or else you're gonna lose it. Yeah, if you don't use it, you lose it. So. Um, yeah, I know Anna really wants to do a glyph and she was thinking about customizing a, um, a cliff jumper in, into glyph. So we would have you... Peter, no, have Peter do it. And then whenever he's 70% right. of the way done, they'll announce it. So. Okay. Right. I mean, it, it's going to come out. It's yeah. there's no question about it. It's going to come out. Just be patient. The Skittles, yeah, they haven't tasted the rainbow yet. The Skittles Not completely. are completely. Yeah. Yeah, I once, don't know how they, they didn't do a tab a out in Glyph. Like, like, how did that not come out with that, um, when they did that comic? Uh, the Valentine's special? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was a missed opportunity. They need to, I mean, I, we could, that, that argument could be made for a lot of things, but Hasbro lining up their toy offerings with their media offerings, right. it, it, they missed the boat so many times. We yeah. should 
call individuals out and tell them to be fired. I think over this, that would be <laughs> that's that's the that's such... the appropriate way to handle such. Yes. That's how an adult does it. Yes. A- absolutely. So I think I think that so. that kind of illustrates what you're trying to the point you were maybe trying to drum up, Lucas. Is that like? Yeah, you don't. It seems like you don't need if you if you customized a green light out of you know a toy from a year or two ago. It's like, oops, you know, like they actually hit that. You know, they did the rainmakers. They did the the not the jump starters. The the power dashers. You know, stuff like that. That it seems it seems like no stone is being left unturned. And if you just wait. If you can wait five years, the thing you want is going to be there by the end of that five years. And if it's not, then then cust- customize it. Do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like 2014, I was like making my own headmasters because I'm like, why don't we have any masters? We have do I have target masters? Do I have headmasters? It's like third parties doing doing a few. So I made some, and sure enough, three years, four years later, Titans return, and I got them all. I even got like a rack of heads up here. So, <laughs> yeah. Headmasters. Well, yeah, and I, I feel like some of the figures that they've done, you know, over the last couple of years, it's just like, okay, they're obviously, like, even unreleased figures and whatnot, like where they did that sandstorm and, and things like that, like where you mm. wouldn't have thought that they were going to touch that kind of stuff. And so that's, that's where... Yeah, I, I don't necessarily know that they're going to do everything, you know, like we never know, but it's like, you know, yeah, it's you always, know. It, it's all, it seems like it's all on the table now at this point. I mean, the last custom I saw that really like made me excited, let's, I was trying to think of a colloquialism, but it just would get dirty. So, um, was that Autobot City custom that like was all over the internet and like, was on certain pages oh, and yeah. the, the artist yeah. got mad and made him take it down. I'm like, dude, your thing is amazing. Why are you mad? Like, this is the coolest custom in years. And, you know, that is like something that goes outside of the box a little bit. But now that I've seen it, I'm like, oh my God, that has to happen at some point, you know, with the studio, studio series 86. Like, it's just like, that's where it should happen if it ever happened. Although those were, you know, war for Cybertron toys and stuff, but, or whatever they were generations. I, I just wonder what that Autobot. I just City, thought it was so cool. Do you think that like someone from Hasbro saw that and was like, "Holy shit!" Like Haslab, Probably. Haslab twenty twenty four, baby. Like or you know whatever. <laughs> they, said, they said, "Hey, grab some yellow plastic. We're going." <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> we are too far into the game to believe that Hasbro doesn't not see anything or that they miss things online. They've got. They've got eyes and ears everywhere, you know. Right. So that yeah, that one was. I mean, they they met, they got it. They don't see everything, but like that was so yeah. impressive that I I would think so, multiple people probably were like, damn, look at this, you know. Right. Probably that one and that one blew up. That one popped like. Right. But I mean, I'm and it, sure and it's something with all no one's ever. Of... Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say with like all the social media and all that type of thing. I mean, you know, someone's like screenshotting that kind of stuff and, you know, sending it to, you know, whoever. So. But what were you going to say, Paul, before I interrupted you? I don't I don't remember just that it's it was so cool. It was literally one of the best customs I've ever seen. But yeah, lately it seems like, uh, as far as customizing is concerned, it's it's decals, 3D printed stuff. We haven't touched on that very much, um, and there's lots of lots of availability out there. So decals, panel lining, things like that, just doing washes and whatever. Um, but there's not a whole lot of cutting required on anything anymore. It's the the molds are so tight, and I don't mean like like tracks, like physically loose or tight. I mean like they're so nice. And so accurate and just so damn pretty. There's no reason to be cutting on people or whatever. But yeah, there's there's a lot of 3D printed parts available from various sources, both domestically and internationally. So have you guys uh, jumped in on any of that or do any of your own or where are we at with that? 
So I personally have not done a lot. Um, 3D printing like scares me um, just because if you don't know, like, I mean, I probably have to kind of wait for someone like you, Peter, or whoever to get it and vouch for it before I actually order it myself just because like the quality of 3D printed plastic is like all over the board. Like you could get something where it is, you know, just completely solid, um, you know, or you could get something that's going to just like break in your hands, like as soon as you get it. And so it always worries me to like to, uh, to get anything that's, that's 3D printed like that. Like your own. That was a pain in the butt to do. Right, I, I appreciate that, Sean. But yeah, <laughs> no, we did, yeah, no, the, yeah, they were fuzzy. They were definitely fuzzy. Um, we did a uh, uh, Sean customized a rung for me um, using the green light, you know, um, uh, mold and whatnot, and um, we ordered the heads off of uh, Shapeways, and like I ordered the best, like I ordered the best plastic I could from Shapeways. And it's still like disintegrated, you know, it's just not really made for that kind of stuff. I've had, yeah, it was brittle and actually like broke like half of the face off of one. So I had to like carefully glue it and then like take a tiny little file and sand down. <laughs> it was, yeah. Wow. I've the had the, luck with the more, yeah, yeah. The more sharp you like the details and the smaller the piece, the more brittle it is. But yeah. I've also had stuff. Uh, from other guys that have been amazing and you know is uh, is really good stuff. I can't remember who the seller was. There was someone that was doing kits a couple of years ago and he ended up quitting, but I can't remember what the name was. Uh, but the plastic that they had, the plastic quality was really good. But I don't know. I I personally prefer injection molded plastic if you can. So, um, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of these guys. I th I, those kits and whatnot are they. 3d printed or are they injection molded or is it just kind of like it could it could be either one it depends on who your source is like a lot of the stuff coming from out of uh like that you would get on tf safari so i guess out of china um like go better studio and and matrix workshop and stuff those things are 3d printed uh but nana does mold injection or injection molding for his stuff and other people use like you know poured resin into uh, into uh, molds and stuff like uh, like render form. It's 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 not three D printed. Um, so yeah, it depends on. I guess my point is it depends on the source. And yeah, like you said, Lucas, wait for reviews before you pick up anything, because especially with a new outfit, you might not like what you get. So Peter, like those kits from TF Safari, have they been pretty good, or have you have you had any issues with any of them? Um, the ones that I've gotten from Go Better Studio have all been really good. Um, some of the other and and they're like smooth and they're painted and they're resilient. Like my kid has gotten some for his toys to augment. There was like a backpack for uh, Earthrise Prime to kind of close that gap in the back of his truck mode, and it also like has part of the transformation sequence to make it look like his gen one animation backpack and it's, you know, sturdy plastic and looks good. It matched. I mean, colors match perfectly. It's really great. Um, and the wheel Jack kit is really good. Uh, and there are a couple of, I don't, I'm trying to think of which one, cause there are a couple that broke, not from go better. But it was from a different, uh, different outfit. Let me look that up on the side. Discuss. I really don't like 3d parts with like, injection molded toys i think if they stand out like a sore thumb especially when you know like everyone wanted to replace the galvatron head on uh titan returns galvatron right. so they would get this like purple mask it just looked ridiculous to me when i saw it depends it on, on the source though there were there were some that were 3d printed that had the like the really bad lines or were way oversized or were just the wrong color um azim or uh, render form did a couple different color kits, one to match Legends and one to match Titans Return that were, you know, press molded and and the right color and swappable sure. faces and the colors were on point. Everything that that didn't look like a 3D printed hat for the 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 Galvatron head or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure there were good versions. I'm talking about strictly like anything you get off Shapeways and you know, you can select colors like and you're just like, oh, yeah, I'll get the purple one. Yeah. That'll match. Like, no, it's not going to fucking match the <laughs> plastic, you dope. 
Like, what are you thinking? But and it, even, it just looks so bad. <laughs> even a lot of that stuff, I mean, it's it can be really hard to match those plastic colors and whatnot. And I know even, like, Nanef has had that issue with some of the kits that he's done where he's like, you know what? I can't, I've been trying and trying and trying to source the, you know, the right color and whatnot. I can't get it. Like I'm just releasing like, you know, it's not going to match a hundred percent. Sorry. Like, and he says it on the website, like for every item now it says, you know, these are not designed to be perfect color matches for whatever figure you might be putting it on. Cause it's, you know, you can't say this is designed specifically for Hasbro, blah, 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 blah. So if you feel like the color is not right for you, one, look at the pictures Two, be prepared to paint. It says that on the site now, like be ready. Yeah. Yeah. But I think well, yeah, color, color matching this stuff is really hard. Like, right. even if you had a fat, I mean, they can't even Hasbro and like Takara can't match the paint with the plastic sometimes, you know, and that's like <laughs> the source. So like, let's, let's cut the small guys a break. Yeah. Some, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Sun streaker all the was... Right. Some streaker or whatever that, uh, you know, didn't, didn't a hundred percent match. And I know we were, Oh, there you go. Did you get it, get it fixed? It, yeah, it's already like just two drops. All right, back, back if, to the if subject. You, if you Sorry. quit swinging him like he was on a noose, maybe you wouldn't have to worry about his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now he's good now. I know uh, Christian was complaining too about Red Alert, uh, the new one that the whites oh, are just slightly. The one that nobody else has. Well, you just have to order it off a of pulse, and you're good to go, man. But you have to order it off off a of pulse two months ago. Yeah, right. And premium membership. Right. I don't have it. Well, Not anyway. See, there, there you go. This is what you guys. This, yeah, this I'm mad us... that Christian didn't offer to buy me one. So I... this makes us users. Hey. Hey. I know, right? Well, yeah. See, see, Peter. The key is is just order it from everywhere, and then that way you'll always get it first. I don't, I don't, multiple, I don't care so about getting about it first. It. Yeah. I don't care about getting it first. I just care about getting it not smashed, which every company seems to be offering the smashed option only for me, <laughs> um, which is a bonus, <laughs> I guess. Neat. Uh, <laughs> and then what Sean said is I'm going to forget one of these pre-orders somewhere. And then ugh, I don't need 14 red alerts or, or, or seven arcs or whatever. I That's don't, nice. I, I don't. Are, are you sure? <laughs> Super sure. Uh, see, and that can become custom fodder. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> melt, melt all that arc plastic down and make uh, Autobot City. Yeah. <laughs> Same color. Um. But uh, I'm trying to think. So I I know another thing with customizing, and I think uh, Paul, we've. We've talked before uh, about some of the customizing that you've done uh, where you make kind of new characters, um, you know, as exclusives, quote unquote. But you just kind of do uh, like a, a small, small run kind of thing for friends and, and whatnot. So what what are you well, doing this year for your uh, custom figure? Well, I already did it. But I mean, that's the thing. You, you're 100 percent safe making your custom of some character that doesn't exist or your like fan fiction character or you know anything that isn't branded as some other character you, you can you can do that um it's another option is all i'm saying instead of like you can like be more creative with it and create your own world and sandbox and um you never have to worry about hasbro having made it Unless you're Pete Sinclair and now Shattered Glass is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you get. That's what you get. So, I mean, I'll show you something I made. I only made, this is a one-off, but this will be a gray series, Bumble Balls. Gray, because I haven't messed with the box, I but like, this is I a... I like that bikini. Yeah, it's a mankini. He's all, he's his, he's his own dude. His name is Bumble Balls. And I, I, I do, uh, I die. My, my specialty is I just, I keep trying to die stuff, even when you're not supposed to. <laughs> or it's not supposed to work. Well, it works. I got him all, like, so, Jin Satomi, does anyone know that name? That's like a, so he, he saw like a, po a post on Instagram that I made of this, and he was like, you're, you're doing it wrong. You're going to melt it, bud. I'm like, ah, it looks good, man. Pretty happy with it. 
Thanks for stopping by. But um, he was like a prolific customizer a decade ago. Like he's kind of disappeared. Yeah, for some reason, like we interact on Instagram like very sparingly, and he was trying to senpai me a little bit and tell me not to to dye this stuff, but I told him it's all good. Um, and this this I just thought this this red bumblebee toy is so ridiculous that I just wanted to see like what would happen if I tried to dye the whole thing black. And it actually, I think it looks way better, yeah. <laughs> like way no, better than the cool. stupid yellow bumblebee. And this was just a funny thing to do. And so, I don't know if this goes on clearance and I can get like 20 of them for like less than 10 bucks a piece. I would, I, I would make this like a small run toy because the paint's actually not tough when it's all one color. You can like assembly line this pretty good. Because like yeah. you were, like you were alluding to, yeah, I try to make like a run of toys, like the same toy like 20 times so a small mini run and that is like so much more complicated than just making a, a single custom for fun you know like oh yeah <clears throat> trying to make 20 of the same thing and make them all look exactly the same is like a, a whole separate challenge that i do not recommend jumping into like, does it look like that scene from 86 movie where they're like being dropped in to like that <laughs> boiling pot <laughs> It's more like you take the whole cast of 86 and throw them in the pot at once. <laughs> <laughs> like, throw all their arms in and then fish them out. Because yeah. dyeing, like, melts the plastic. Like, yeah, it's... like, there's, like, a fine point, isn't there? Like, I've never tried it because I don't want to melt it. But, I mean, I could try a junker, but... I recommend trying to... Like, every toy is, like, its own adventure because each part... Some of it's ABS, some of it's uh, PVC. It's all different, and it all it all runs it all reacts to the dye a little differently i kind of so do when i do dyeing i do it like chocolate i put the dye in a in a jar and then i put the jar inside a pot and then i don't put the jar just on the pot i have a block of wood that i put in the bottom of the pot fill that with water put the jar full of dye in that and then put the parts in and then just keep huh. moving them around okay you're taking you're taking the color and and we're done. Okay, cool. And then move everything over and let it dry and, and then assess and then redive if necessary. So the sake method. Sure. Yeah, that's how you warm a sake. You, you know, oh, you get your drink. boiling pot of water and you put your carafe in the middle. and. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, it's an interesting, method. interesting method. Of... One thing that I would like to get that I would... I just don't know if it exists. Like a little... I've been, I've been tr I just can't find the word. It's like a ladle, but like I want like a cage ladle. So like, say it's a little. Imagine a tea. Like, you a want tea ball. Like, like you're doing eggs, like you're dying eggs. Sort of, but I want like a little cage with the stick, so I can like put parts in it and like I can clamp it down and put that. Look into... for deep fry stuff. Look for yeah, like, deep like a deep fryer yeah. thing for plastic parts. <laughs> so yep. I've been trying to. I've, I've, I'm pretty sure i have to invent this thing at this point instead of find one but if you know how to if you can find a cage ladle let me know but this no, year I, I made like a, i think my wife has something like that upstairs but it's not like totally caged and it's just like a bowl like a, with a like handle a bowl. on it yeah, that might work with, with like with like a part, screen the parts usually float that's why that's why you need the cage so it's like fully right. held in and then you can just undip it you can like dip it like peter was saying or you could like keep it in and pull it out and keep it in and pull it out because the problem with throwing 20 parts into a, a boiling pot of water is like you forget one and there that part that part's incredibly destroyed which is kind of fun to look at sometimes like the then failure you one, then you have one off and you've got to resource the part mm -hmm. look at that peter look at that straining ladle Pretty good. Does that fully cut? Well, that's it's it's the closest I've seen. That's very good. It's, it's pretty close. It looks like it dumps everything out. I, I just put a link in the chat for those listening. I put a link in the chat to something on Amazon. It, it's a ladle. It has it strains fluids, so you can eyeball the part and then redunk it if you need to. Whoa, cool. I will check that out a little more closely when we're done with this. Um, so I did make one one actual like mass produced toy, and this year I kind of went a little different than I usually do. I'm in the middle of a combiner, so like I release a figure every year that's an arm or a limb or something, 
And now that we're redoing combiners and legacy, it's like, uh oh, I better speed this up <laughs> pretty quick because <laughs> they're like so outdated. But that's the thing to get toys. You got to make like 20 to 25 at a time. You have to get them on clearance and you have to be able to like get enough of them at the time that they're on clearance. You can't like change your mind. I can't decide, oh, I wish I had 20 combiner war swindles right now. You know, that's going to be like $70 a piece if I wanted to do that or something, you know, to find that many. It's insane. Mm-hmm. So combiner with... wars wreck gar. Yeah, that's one here? of them. Uh, still not. I have I have enough of him. They're sitting okay. in the in the okay. the vault somewhere. This but this year I did a bot bot because it was you know COVID and everything. I wasn't gonna have a big event, so I sort of just was like, this was relevant to our lore for the store or for the for the story. And this is Cliff Dumper, the plunger, or a bell if it's kind of different color. That wow. was the weirdest thing they called they called like the second series like a bell. I'm like no. Nah. That's a gold, that's yeah. Plunger. yeah. Well, funny you say that, Sean, because um, there are two chase versions amidst the run of this that were the bell, so he has a different face than the rest. Oh. Of but this one was dyed black, and I purposely bent the handle there, and he's just a—it's a blue plunger. It's, it's, it's not it was this is like pretty simple oh that's cool you still got his face in there yep yeah so wasn't my coolest toy ever but i did it in a small oh and i dyed the the bot bots balls I think i'm black whatever i don't know i mean i, I have I a few left at fun, though because a lot of times you will do uh new packaging too for it as well so it's kind of a fun little thing Oh, yeah, and this year I I didn't really do that, but I did have a, like, every year we have a coaster, so, I mean, he does have box <laughs> art. <laughs> he has face mud on his yes, He has face mud on him. <laughs> He's a plunger. Where is it? So that's, I mean, yeah, it's it's really s- silly. It's uh, my own little compartment of not really Transformers that I mess with and been doing it for four years now so you need to make a little comic book to go with all your characters well usually usually this year i did not go with the comic book because basically i have people that help me with this stuff and i pay them and like you know it basically rolls into the price of the toy you can't i mean if i made the comic book there, there's another like 100 to 150 bucks that i have to pay the the guy that helps me with that which i'm happy to do but then that makes the bot bot like 10 extra dollars <laughs> to anyone that's going to buy it. And it's like, no, let's yeah. not do that. So didn't, didn't do a, didn't do a comic this year, just a coaster, just a coaster. But I, I think like the reason I got into dying is because if you're going to do m- multiples of the same toy, like you're mass producing sort of in a way, the dying is far more efficient than any paint app, you know, yeah. like painting that thing blue, each, each one of those, bot bots blue was like a huge ordeal for me because it was yep. painting it on black took like 20 different coats i mean luckily i have an airbrush now so that still went pretty quick but like you know i don't have time i don't have the hours it used to take to do like like one paint app one brush touch on 25 figures that's like half an hour or to an hour depending on how even if even if you're mm-hmm. assembly lining it it's like it just yeah. takes so long yeah you gotta well, do multiple small coats to it takes forever yeah I mean, yeah. that's if you're doing it right. You, coats, you what are you talking sides. about? <laughs> you got like inside of it, on the outside, this side, that side. It's it's a lot of paint. Yeah. Well, uh, TF Expo, so, uh, you know, we do exclusives for that. And, um, you know, that that's something as well where um, we've had people. And I don't know, Sean, have you, have you helped with that or is it mainly? Not, like no, no, thankfully no. <laughs> so... so so yeah, I'm so no, there's I'm a couple, not an organizer. There's a couple guys that uh, that do it, and, and man, those guys are saints because it's literally, you know, like they've shown us like pictures of their uh, place or whatever where they just have all the parts on uh, like foam pieces, you know, on like little toothpicks, yep. uh, where they like had to spray paint all the stuff, like you know, 
Like we did a G2 Grimlock one one year and it was They did uh, a really good job with that. Oh, they it was did. absolutely fantastic. It was an amazing like they took um Oh, I can't there there was, that was like Craig. A, it was yeah, it was Craig, but they did like a knockoff of uh, It was the, the small it was a small um Grimlock. Um it came as a kit that you could build. Yeah. Kind of like a Gundam. Peter, I'm looking at you. What was the name of that? Oh, I mean, that was the third party one. That was the one they did to Megatron, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. That yeah. was it. But they did a knock. There's a knockoff of it. And so that's what what we used. And then we did G2. But what uh, what we did for the customizing classes, we pre-painted all of them and put clear coat on. When I say we, I mean Craig. Uh, Craig, mm-hmm. he he did it all, and it was like he did a fan, just a, an absolutely stellar job, especially considering the fact that I can't remember how many. I think there was like maybe twenty of those uh, that he did. I can't, I can't remember if it was twenty or thirty or something like that. I mean, it was it's pretty nuts. Yeah, it's an undertaking. Whether I mean, yeah, custom customs for for homebrew customs are are an undertaking. Yeah. I actually bought one of the extra kits that year because I missed out on the original run or the original, like the the 20 pieces or whatever you guys did. So I bought an extra kit and uh, made a G2 out of that. It turned out really good. It was a lot of fun. But uh... So how did, how did they get the source kits? Like, did they... Make a deal with the, one of the manufacturers, or like, like oh, well, that, that one maybe? was easy. It was just all off of AliExpress. Or, AliExpress. Yeah. Or okay. Yeah. 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 But I mean, for the TF Expo, um, the exclusives and things like that. I mean, it's kind of a similar process to what you had said, where you know we're looking for figures that go on clearance in order to source the you know the the base you know figure and whatnot there's other ones that we do too um so a lot of times like we'll work with um you know different designers and whatnot like we'll work with trent uh troop and or different people like that um to to make this stuff so but um i i want to give a shout out to trent troop just in general his designs are freaking brilliant and it's a shame that that so much of it is is on shapeways and 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 yeah. having to bear the the weaknesses of shapeways plastic whether it's the lack of definition for their their strong whatever whatever strong flexible plastic or the weakness like physical weakness and brittleness of their detail plastic it's it's just a shame i wish i wish some of his stuff could be injection molded and they were more available because it's fun faces yeah. fun bmog fun stuff yeah. Well, he does, he does amazing work and whatnot. Um, yes, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know that, uh, you know, the, the BMOG stuff was kind of a, an undertaking. I think after that, you know, he pr- probably was not as big into trying to have his own inventory. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree with you that he's, you know, a fantastic designer and, and it's too bad that, um, you know, I, I wish that there was a way to, get those designs injection molded so i mean he helped me with one of my exclusives once because i started with a, I started small with titan master and i wanted a custom face on it mm-hmm. and so i had the drawing but he i suck i was like oh, i can do this in google sketch no so i quit and then he i was like hey man can i just hire you to do this and he said yes and we use shapeways and we use the the fine clear plastic it was like some, I don't know, whatever. It wasn't the most expensive method, but it was good enough. And my results were awesome. The quality was good. It was just one of those, like, you know, face chips that would go on a on a Titan Master with a little screw hole in it. Right. And I had to, like, use Goo Gone on it or something mm-hmm. to kind of get rid of, like, whatever the initial oils and stuff are. Because I wanted to prime it and paint it. Um, but the details were great. So I, I think, like, he knows. And Trent told me which style to get. Um, where to because we like basically made a tree of them and printed that one tree so i basically it was one purchase and they all came off i had to like a plastic tree um he he knows how to make it work so i don't don't know what um quality you guys got or what like you know maybe you got a bunk batch you know with that yeah well one one face was good the other one head was good the other one was bad Mm -hmm. so 
And for their like the I think it's UFD ultra fine detail plastic. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. That I mean it looks great. And you, you like you said, there's a process. You clean, you know, get some goo gone, clean it off, scrub it up nicely, and then you can prime it and paint it. And it looks great. Like I've got figures that are completed, and I don't have anything out because I'm still unpacking or whatever. But I have figures that are completed that have used that that material for heads and faces and things like that, and they look great. But they are not suitable for play. You know, a BMOG in ultra fine detail, you're not going to be able to like move the the critters arms and legs or, or whatever, or transform it. You're going to break pegs off. You're going to, you're going to hurt it. Um, but, uh, yeah, but yeah no, I as think far if as you the do detail face plates and things like that, I think that that would be perfect right. for it. It's just, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't want to like actually have like a ball joint or something like that. That would actually put stress on it. Right. This it's is wrong. not focusing at all. Okay. Yeah, it's not focusing at all, but here's mine I never completed, Lucas. <laughs> you didn't I really use it it, it, it. it split like right across like this part. So like the, say, the, the ball one, joint the part was. For me turned out really well. You didn't so... really use green light, right? I mean, you used Chromium. No, we used this one. Yeah, we didn't use Chromium. Or, or Moon Racer, I think. Moon right? Racer. Yep, Moon Racer. Yeah. It was Moon like Racer, a clear, yep. clearance Moon Racer. I was convinced when that mold came out that they were going to do a rung out of it, and I was disappointed when they did not. Yeah, no, I don't know why I, I they didn't the do that. I mean, this actually do... works pretty well. Like, I mean, I, I, yeah. I don't know. When Sean did it, he took the um, – I, I had him take the extra pieces off. Um, but uh... – I mean, but I mean, functionally, he, he's – I mean, he transforms into a stick. Right. <laughs> no, no spoilers. No spoilers. He's a stick. Um, an ornament. I'm sorry, an ornament. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, P- Peter, unlike you, like whenever I do a project, they don't ever like repaint it into like the easy thing that would have been just easy to make it a different color. So here's a couple examples. Um, here is Cup from Optimus Pax. Yeah, pa- yep. Pax Orion or Ryan Pax. Yep. So, I mean, that was that would have been such an easy custom. I did nothing to this other than like change the colors. So, here's him. Here's um, oh, Huffy uh, Huffer. Huffer out yeah. of uh, off road or trailbreaker. Um, it was uh, this one is actually Ironhide. Okay. I even used the same head. I just shaved down some of the details. Oh, it's nice. It's gonna be as blurry as heck. So. Well, I mean. You know that one combines, but he he got, I would say Huffer s- s- suffered from the new shiny thing syndrome. I did that. You did that, yeah. I mean, I I don't know why they didn't do that. It's so it easy. Just, it's so it's easy. Just paint. Yeah. Just literally paint. So I don't know. That like they miss out on stuff like that, like mm-hmm. easy, like like I don't want to do it because I think they're going to do it and then they don't do it. So I do it anyway. Well, wasn't Wave wasn't Wave Rider supposed to be with Grand Max? He, the diver mold was supposed to be a new mold with Grand Max, and there is a mold available on Shapeways, and I bought that. And but I'd already done the uh, the paint 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 lander or whoever. Or, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Cloudburst as diver or, or or Wave Rider. But yeah, there there is a separate mold that exists. It exists that was supposed to come as the uh, as the uh, what do you call it? The level up thing for for Grand Max from the mall exclusive. What are those things called? When you stretch, hit the... stretch goal. Stretch goal. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not a marketing right. master. The thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just would have been so easy just to change colorways, and there you are. Yeah. Once you see it, you're like, oh, hmm, that should have happened. Should have. There are so many things that should have happened that just glyph. And tap out, having never gotten official representation outside of BotCon 2002 or whatever it was, is ridiculous. Now I know that there was the 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 the, the glyph bumblebee from the classics mold that a few people have that there's a dozen of them floating around or whatever, but that was never actually released. You know, those are factory samples that never were supposed to escape, but did. But there's not been a mainstream release, and it's it's kind of confusing and frustrating and, and and i hope that they follow through so that we don't have to make customs of those characters 
Yeah. It, it definitely seems, you know, weird to me. And, like, it seems like that they're definitely putting a lot more uh, female Transformers in their assortments and whatnot. But it seems like lately they're like, all right, uh, RC and uh, RC and Alita 1 and RC. So We could still use a, 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 an Alita 1 in a new deco using the mold from the Netflix version that would hit closer to the generation one cartoon aesthetic. Yeah. You know, there's not a pink Alita one in the proper mold yet. So that's still an, a big open uh, and available opportunity for them. And they probably will fill that. I think according to the leaked uh, rumors and whatnot. Right. So we'll see. It's we'll something. see if that comes true. But yeah, I don't know. I, I guess some of the other custom fodder too is I, I don't know if you could do uh, finish up the MicroMaster teams uh, might be another thing to do, right, Peter? Uh, you need to do that so the rest of us can get those teams finished. They're gonna make the mask. <laughs> they're gonna make mask vehicles, vehicles before they finish up the MicroMasters. So that was Certainly. so. An- that was so annoying to me that we got all these MicroMasters from the Galactic Odyssey and, like, there were none of the ones anyone really wanted. Yeah. They're like, oh, here's some mask guys. What the? F- Come on. Just two of each patrol set or, you know, the four packs. Well, the, the Botropolis set was the biggest, like, stick up my butt ever. It was like, oh, here's some guys. <laughs> Just random dudes. Yeah, these are nobody. These aren't even. Oh, we've already really released these guys. So, uh, you know, here, here they are again. Enjoy. So I went on Sir Toys and just bought a bag of random MicroMasters because they are, some of them are, are Minicon knockoffs, some of them are six combiner knockoffs, and some of them are straight up Gen 1 MicroMaster knockoffs, and they're one-to-one scale. So I'm going to reshell some of the other figures and just try and put ball joints on some of these guys and paint them up nicely. We've got dudes from the Construction Patrol, we've got uh, dudes from the Monster Trucks Patrol, uh, the Military Patrol, and the Hot Rod Patrol. And, and then these are three of the same mold to make um, Barricade, Roller Force, the blue dude, Barricade, Barricade, uh, from the Racetrack Patrol, because he's wrong as a straight-up repaint of Roller Force or whoever. It's uh, that, that the, set, the, the fact that they didn't complete things, and now I'm going to get started on these. Okay. And then, well, don't worry, the small ones will take even longer than the big ones. <laughs> yeah, because it, it'll only take me five minutes to finish. It'll take five minutes. Yeah. It's just five minutes, mm-hmm. so it'll be fine. And then... It'll be four years later, yeah. and it's still sitting in the toothpick for detail. Yep. So yeah, MicroMasters. If you want to do MicroMasters, go to SirToys.com and buy all the MicroMasters. I'm looking at five years of work right there. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like how you said a toothpick. Like that is my paintbrush when I'm doing toys. Yeah. It's a toothpick. Oh yeah, that is, that is how I do it. So Sometimes you have to like eyes. sharpen the toothpick to like yeah. get just a just a pinprick. Boop. So great. Uh, sort of unrelated, but brought up MicroMasters, and I've this has been in my head for a week. Like, um, I know that we want the little MicroMaster sets completed because they came in sets, but like, how do you guys feel about like deluxe interpretations of individual MicroMasters? They're fine. I have a deluxe version of uh, Stakeout. Based on his appearance from Sins of the Wreckers, in I'm, I'm, well, my record shelf is not set up yet again, but uh, using a, a clear, ultra fine detail Shapeway's head, um, that split when I put it on the ball joint, uh, but it, I glued it all together and it, it, it ended up looking really good. Uh, and it's made from a Combiner Wars Prowl. Um, so yeah, so I've got a deluxe stakeout, and then over in my zone shelf, I've got. MicroMaster Holy, and I took the one from the 10 pack that was supposed to be based off the six combiner dude and painted that up to look more like Cartoon Holy, where he's white and black in car mode as opposed to the all black that the actual figure is. Paul, they did that seven or eight years ago. Um, I geared the tote. Remember that? No. <laughs> yeah. I, re- that. I remember the throttle bots. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, they, I they took an iron they did hide. like a masterpiece iron hide and ratchet, but they also did like tote 
which is not a lot different. Hmm. I think Toy World did the throttle bots, actually, right? Toy World, yeah, Toy World did the throttle bots. I gear did the uh, the the yeah the masterpiece ratchet and Ironhide and then the the, the redeco, well re, I, re, retooled head. Yeah, I just like that moment in like IDW World where Fix It was like a normal size transformer and like walking around and. I d- I was just like, oh, that's cool. Like, if you could take that whole cast of MicroMasters and not, and just like ignore the fact that they were micro, you know, little guys, little toys, and make yeah. them all just like, that Guzzlers. could have almost been Generation Two. Yeah, you turn yeah, them into guys. I'm Guzzlers, with you. you know? I'm with you there. Yeah. Like, like, all why those guys could have been a cool. little ambulance. Like, yeah. Who's gonna fit in a tiny little ambulance? <laughs> I just think like that. It'd be cool if they started sprinkling that in. You yeah. know, like one or two per per chapter of the story or something that'd be cool i'd be fine from planet I'm, micron i'm still looking for updated versions of, of some of the legend scale figures um yeah. you know again like the throttle bots is one of them um but uh but even some of the you know seasons you know one two and three uh you know some of the mini bots and whatnot we're, we're still we're getting there they're, they're getting through them, but... Uh, well, you don't have to, like, to finish those to do a MicroMaster. I don't, I don't know. Nope. I just think there's, there's lots of cool sure. characters there that I think never... Ne- have still, to this day, never gotten their due other than the MicroMasters comic where they were still MicroMasters. The fact that we haven't gotten a new Fix-It at all is just... What? He, I mean, he, he featured prominently in the Gen 1 comic. He featured prominently, you know... In, He's just he's, he's he's a missed opportunity, and it's just so weird. I guess so that we can all be clamoring for fix it, and then people who've never read the comics or stuck around with Gen One long enough to know who the MicroMasters are or care would be like, "Well, are you clamoring for that guy? Why don't we have more? I don't know, wind charge." There we go. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 rough. It's it's there's that there's that line that has for us to walk because. They know entry level. When grandma is shopping for junior, grandma knows to buy Optimus Prime, Mega Guy, and Bumble Guy because those are the guys, you know? Maybe that, that yeah. whiny jet guy. I don't know. But that's about it. How about grandma, Getaway and Slapdash? Let's get some of them. Let's get some of them. But you could you could easily retool a sure shot into uh, a getaway. You know? You could you could you could do that. And then Slapdash is just just retooled Mirage. Just do it. It's fine. I don't know. Parts so end many... up in the wrong place. Do it. It's not going to line up perfectly, but it's going to be at least a step in the right direction as opposed to we're just ignoring this character completely for no reason. But here's your 14th Bumblebee redeco in an exclusive target pack or whatever, you know? Yeah. But, well, yeah, but the Bumblebee is what's probably going to sell it for like a lot of people. So like that's that's the trouble you know, that they always have to have to go through. But like it's like there's so many different iterations of Transformers too that it's it's hard to actually hit every character from, you know, every iteration and, and whatnot. So it's like the upcoming one I think they're gonna start doing Prime and they've done Beast Wars and like it's just trying to get They're gonna do Power Masters next, hopefully. But yeah too. Hopefully, yeah. Eighty eight so, needs more love. Idiot just in general needs I mean, more love. I mean, yeah, they did Genrai, they did they've done Double Dealer, so yep. But, so yeah, we just need Peter to do all the customs and so then that way mm-hmm. uh, Hasbro as so soon much as stuff. you get started on it. So crack the whip. <laughs> Oof. Let me set up my toy room first before I start getting into customs room. That's a different room. Arg. <laughs> Oh. All right. Well, um, is, is there any any other topics we want to hit on tonight, or have we kind of? Um, we could talk local bands. There you go. Or we could know. just peace out and go watch them. Cust- customs are cool. It's yeah, it's a there. whole part. It's a whole part of the fandom that I ignored for a long, long time, and I think um, that's a mistake. I mean, it, I don't think it's – there's some people that's all they care about. It's like, oh, they want to get their toy and paint it. You know, like that's – it's like their project. And I'm like, whoa, that's so different than, than the way I ever came into this this uh, fandom. But um, 
I don't know. It's it's definitely a big part of it. It's just, but you you can completely ignore it if you if you wish. To. It's it's something that you, yes, you can just completely not pay attention to. But the 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 levels of creativity, just I mean, on just on the show. I mean, Sean, you do amazing work, and we are floored by everything we see coming yeah. out of you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. The 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 levels of creativity coming out of the fandom are just so remarkable and so worth checking out, even if customizing isn't for you it's i mean just hop on the boards look around i i, I mean it's it's it, there's a lot out there to do and maybe you can take inspiration from it try your hand at a few things maybe just 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 eyeball it and enjoy it sometimes it's just out of necessity though like first edition primes shins would never stay tabbed so just out of necessity i did rare earth magnets magnet there metal here and now they snap in and they stay nice so that's yeah. pretty slick. It's just like I mean, a lot like most of my custom just come out of necessity or just like I love this character. Why haven't they done them? So, but I think the other thing too is a lot of people are just so intimidated by it, and I know I, I have been as well. But then I really enjoy like once I actually sit down and do it. Like I've done a couple custom classes, like the TFCon. Uh, custom class and whatnot and it's like i really had a lot of fun with it and it turned out better than i thought i would be able to do even as like a novice and so i i think you know for a lot of people that want to try it it's like you know especially with the fact that we're getting like redos of a lot of characters you know like some of those ones where you're mad that you're like oh man like i got another you know bumblebee or another optimus it's like okay we'll turn that into something else you know like if if that's what, if you're mad and don't feel like selling and whatnot you know use it for custom fodder turn that frown upside down make lemon aid out of lemons make decepticons out of autobots that's what we do. make destrons out of what was the Cy- good guy version? cybertron cybertron Cyber, yeah cybertron yep yeah. So. It's been a while since I've watched a Japanese series. A long time. Man, I kind of miss when it was all, like, crazy, you know? Like, yeah. you didn't know <laughs> everything was whatever anyone wanted. <laughs> and now it's all... that. There is no convoy, only OP. So. Interestingly, I think I just bought the first Optimus Prime figure released in Japan. And that's your homework. Not convoy. Optimus Prime. It's your homework is to figure out which one was the first uh, Optimus Prime figure released in Japan. Can, can I? Well, I mean, can I get? Can we talk about this, or is this sure. like a next episode thing? Well, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go. You got things to do, so I don't want to keep you. Over at this point. Um, was it? Was it in 2007? Oh, so it was way before that. Okay. Because I remember the only reason I bring it up, and I don't want to. I can't answer the question, obviously, but like. I just remember that was like to me a big moment where like oh my god the movie has made this he's Optimus yeah. Prime that they're is not, not Cybertrons me. anymore they're Autobots they're not Destrons anymore they're Decepticons and he is not Convoy anymore he is Optimus Prime but there is a, there's at least one figure predating that by over a decade that yeah is it the Metal Force toy that one was re-released as Cybertron Commander Optimus Prime uh, and the first one was was Convoy but. It predates, it predates that, too. Oh, boy. Well, I have no idea, then. Oh, uh, the cut's so deep. I don't know. Here <laughs> there, <laughs> there, there we go. We'll have to do some TF Wiki research here. See see if we can figure it should be out. like a giveaway. I don't know like, if it's on the wiki. Whoever gives the first one. Is it not on the, the TF Wiki? Well, there you go, Peter. You I don't know. I haven't, I haven't checked. Uh, if, it, if it isn't on there, I'll... Well, it's not like you can so search. That way I can just search up. Yeah. First there's Optimus only, Prime. Like, that's yeah, not there's only one entry for Optimus month. Prime. Yeah, he's, there's only one Optimus Prime entry in TF Wiki. <laughs> <laughs> it's Heroes of Cybertron. Well, I can't wait to uh, to find out the answer <laughs> to that, Peter. That is a great yeah. trivia question. Yeah. Well, thank but you not- guys uh, for joining me tonight. Um, and, uh, you know, thank you to all of our listeners and uh, and whatnot. So... Uh, we will be back uh, live again next week, um, and then we will be we should be live for uh, microcasters this week as well. So, um, so anyway, all right. Well, thank you guys, and we will see you next week.
Thank you.